Today we're going to talk about how to make the absolute fastest march you possibly can in Rise of Kingdoms. And this is a sequel to the previous video I made on the topic that got over 100,000 views. And a lot has changed since I made that video over three years ago. So stick around for all the things you need to know about making the absolute fastest march in the game in Rise of Kingdoms. Hello my friends and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And it's not a coincidence that I have tiered, iconic equipment up on the screen, because a number of things have been added to the game since I last made a video talking about how to make the literal fastest march possible. So in this video, I want to talk about exactly how you do that in the new context of the world, with museum buffs, with tiered, iconic equipment, with all the new commander options we have, and of course, if there's any one part of this video you want to see, like if you want to jump right to the talents, then use the timestamps in the description, even though the talents haven't actually changed since the last time I made this video. So let's just talk very briefly about the things that have changed right up front. And of course, we need to talk about tiered iconic equipment. This is insanely powerful and expensive to get to. Now, the windswept equipment of the past is still very good, but... The upgrades you can get on your boots are technically better. If we get a look at this, you've got 5% march speed over here, plus an effect with another 5% march speed, plus if you have them talented, like you're getting even more march speed. So yeah, you can get a bunch of march speed from the boots. Even the gloves have effects that when you take damage, you can gain march speed, which is super critical for something like carrying the arc now this effect is different on different troop types we'll talk about that in a bit point is there are new equipment items that you can go and seek out in addition there's this little thing called the museum wasn't available the first time i made a video about this and the museum buff gives you some really powerful options particularly julius caesar okay we're going to talk about julius caesar 20 percent march speed is actually insane Oh, and 20% all damage is really good too. Again, available after KVK Season 3 and beyond. So these are some pretty major changes and the release of new commanders, right, that make this video worth updating. So let's go back to basics here and talk for a minute about what commanders you use. And there's two things that are going to help you decide how to make the absolute fastest march possible. In fact, three things. One is the troop type. Another is the talent trees available. And of course, the third thing is going to be any base march speed skills that are on the commander. So if we get a look, actually, the first thing we need to talk about is the fact that cavalry are just faster. I mean, you're in this video. You probably already knew this. But if you look at the base stats for a cavalry unit, they have more march speed. OK, it's they just have more march speed. They have 80 base points in march speed compared to your infantry which are the slowest unit in the game, well, the slowest unit you'd ever use, 65 base march speed. Your archers are 70, and I suppose siege, I guess they're slower. Uh, okay, they're 60. Siege are 60. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that cavalry move faster, so just what your percent boosts are modifying is higher on cavalry, all right? Now that we've established cavalry commanders are what you're after, we can actually just change this filter, um, and what we, technically, you could do leadership or integration. Like, technically, you could use them as a primary, and we'll, we'll get into that nuance in a minute, but um, cavalry is really what you're hunting for, and, and at the end of the day, it is cavalry that's the fastest. So, what do I mean by cavalry is the fastest? Well, you have cavalry talents, which are super relevant, and you want to find a commander that has mobility and peacekeeping. Now, that's obviously a very specific thing, cavalry, mobility, and peacekeeping. And there aren't that many commanders that have that. But the one that does that we need to call your attention to is Double C. Double C has that triple threat, and that is how you get the most march speed in the game. I'll show you both those talent builds in just a minute. There are other commanders that have that combination. Belisarius, namely, is very free-to-play accessible, very early game friendly, that has this combination. So if what you cared about was maybe less running the arc and more being a menace during the mightiest governor killing gathering marches. I mean, look, you're not going to make any friends doing that, but 
uh, Belisarius actually works. Um, there is another commander, of course, we've got to talk about, Dragonlancer, but he has the versatility tree instead of peacekeeping. The maximum march speed you can get here is simply less. The versatility tree is not great for this, right? Another free-to-play commander we obviously need to talk about is Lancelot. Cavalry, mobility, but unfortunately, again, versatility tree, not going to cut it, okay? So there are many cavalry commanders in this day and age that give you speed. In fact, there are just many commanders, including a few leadership, that give you a lot of speed. The fastest you used to be able to get was 15% on a secondary. Khan was really good for that. Attila was really good for that. I mean, technically still is. The downside of Khan is that you gain speed when you're not in combat and you lose it when you are and you lose another 10% speed. So he, he's like fine for gathering runes. But the two callouts as the very best these days for a secondary commander are going to be Honda Tadakatsu and I showed you earlier Julius Caesar. They are sitting at 20% extra march speed, which is the most at the time of this recording you can get a on a secondary for cavalry specifically. Now Honda Tadakatsu comes with the additional benefit of 10% extra troop capacity. The reason you instead see Julius Caesar in Ark of Osiris is because he has 15% troop capacity, which is simply more troops to fill the garrison with. So if we get a look again at double C, the reason we use him as the primary is because he's got this 10% march speed. He is a cavalry commander and he's got cavalry peacekeeping mobility. So let's actually get a look at these talents and talk about how you go as fast as possible. Now this technically is the bill. The first talent we need to talk about that's very noteworthy is charge. When you're below 50%, you go 30% faster. That's huge. Technically, it's a 30% march speed buff. It's not exactly 30% faster, but you get the idea here. This is insane. It's so good for carrying the arc or Mightiest Governor shenanigans. Like anytime you're out in the field and you hit that mark, you are basically uncatchable. Now, there's also march speed over here. Another 6%. Nice to pick that up. Another talent we have to talk about is Hasty Departure. This doesn't give you any march speed just going around the field. It gives you march speed when you leave a structure. 60% speed boost for 10 seconds is huge. This is so important that in Ark of Osiris, we see the swap out of using Joan Prime instead of Nevsky as the primary in the Nevsky-Joan combo. And that's because Joan Prime has hasty departure in the support tree. Support tree is very powerful, okay? Um, but also mobility for this talent over here. Very, very good. From here, we need to talk about time management. This one is a blessing and a curse. 10% march speed for five points is not very good. And you lose that march speed when you enter combat. Like these talent points actually suck. It's actually surprising how sucky these talent points are. I, I mean this lovingly <laughs> for like being at the top of the tree. And we'll talk about like, why you might pick some other stuff instead. Uh, that that said, Alacrity is really good. Uh, whenever your enemy inflicts a slow effect on you, you have a 30% ch chance to just negate the effect, which is really great. For Mightiest Governor shenan shenanigans, like you defeat a troop, you go faster. This is very good. And in the Peacekeeping Tree, as I promised, there's a lot of March Speed. 1.3%. 2 points, 6%. Three more points, another 9%. Like this branch of peacekeeping is actually just insane for getting march speed. It's just really, really OP. Now that said, this is technically the fastest you can go, but time management is going to be a real uh, no-go for a lot of people. In which case, here's the alternate speed built that if I remember correctly is only like 1% slower so this is like really not that much slower at all. And what are you getting in this alternate speed build? Well, you still retain the march speed you got over here. You are losing some stats over here. You're losing the speed boost when you kill a march. And you're losing the 10% march speed over here. Um, but also you're shedding the march speed loss when you enter combat, which is just terrible for carrying an arc, right? So instead, you get 3% march speed over here and 6% march speed over here. So you lost 10% march speed, but you gained 9% march speed. So again, like I said, 1% slower, but doesn't come with the downside of getting wrecked when you're in combat. Now, there are a few downsides here. One is that we haven't picked up alacrity. I suppose you could put these points into alacrity if you wanted to, where like if you're hit with a slow effect, you have a chance to shed it. 
which is kind of nice. A little debuff shrug. Swiftness is another nice one. When you take skill damage, you have a chance to gain march speed. I thought that was a better pick personally than going for alacrity. So that's why I put the remaining two points of flex over here. Technically, you could drop another 3% march speed if you preferred the alacrity, which for an arc carry could be worth. I mean, you're basically dropping 3% three percent speed all the time for 2% extra speed some of the time. I don't know. It's neither here nor there. This is the build you would use for most speedy things that you're going to go and do. And some carriers will no doubt do a few changes here where they say, hey, you know what? Like, I want some extra, you know, damage mitigation. I could believe that. Like, I could believe some arc carriers say, I don't care about hasty departure because I'll get to the middle in time. What I want is to be the best runner possible. And so they might ditch these sort of seven points off to the side, reallocate them to alacrity, swiftness, and a few points into emblazoned shield, just as an example of how you could take this build and make it just a little bit more tanky, right? But this speed build is probably what I would do for most I need to go fast situations. Again, for arc carrying, I might make those small adjustments. So that brings us to what other small things can you do? And I will point out, by the way, you may have heard me mention Joan Prime earlier. This is Joan of Arc Prime. She actually, when you're outside of Alliance territory, also has 20% march speed. So it's 10% all the time and another 10% outside of territory. But the reason you don't see Joan Prime being used to carry the arc is she's so insane for field fighting. Like, it's a waste to put her on an arc march. She should be fighting in the field. Now, I did mention also the support tree. We should talk about that. The reason people use Joan Prime as the primary in Ark of Osiris instead of Nevsky is that you get this hasty departure buff. That's really it. And you, you think, wow, wow, is March Speed that important in Ark of Osiris? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Y yes. <laughs> that, yes. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> All right. So hasty departure, very important pickup here, um, specifically for Ark. Uh, and I will also call out that one other way you get a little bit extra March Speed, a little miscellaneous change here is you pick a civilization that has march speed so the one that is most commonly chosen especially in archival cyrus league is going to be the ottoman empire for the five percent march speed and five percent skill damage that's a nice pickup um, there are other you know ways to get march speed but i think ottoman civ has got to be the best pick overall for that i mean for example like i've used rome and like you know it's fine and I had a mostly infantry lineup, which is why I was doing it. Um, and there was a time where garrison captains were kind of doing that. But the march speed is so important that shockingly, even though in the Osiris Grand Prix, the best of the best in the world with access to everything, they could do whatever they wanted, even though they were running four marches of cavalry, full cavalry, you heard me correctly, instead of opting for a cavalry civilization, they opted for the march speed. That's how important that is. Now, I would assume that means their decision was correct and that they didn't leave a bunch on the table. Uh, but, you know, if you actually, for you know, had the cavalry special unit, there's not actually a great cav civ for this. I mean, I guess Arabia if you're rallying, but, you know, you could have 5% extra health and the cataphract, like, you'd get some extra base stats here. I mean, it's not a small amount of base stats. It, it's actually like, you know, a bunch of iconic crystals worth of base stats. But let's shift gears a little bit and talk about equipment. Good news for early game players. At the blue quality equipment, you can get Windswept, which is going to help you move really fast. You get a talent on this, and you'll get an extra percentage point of march speed, which is really great. The four-piece bonus is going to give you another 4% of march speed. So until you get iconic tier 5 legendary equipment, I mean, which you know, most people won't for a very long time, these this, this website is going to be great, man. Ton of march speed to be found here. Talents the equipment for your cavalry, and pretty much everybody should have a set of this lying around for, you know, some situation where you need to go fast. When we look at the actual break-even point for swapping off of these uh, blue boots, you're getting four percent march speed with a talent over here, and four percent march speed from the set bonus, which is really good. So you've got. 8% march speed on these windswept boots. So if you're going to shift gears for cavalry specifically, 
and you've got these set boots. You need to beat that amount. Well, you've got to get all the way to tier five. 10% march speed. Even with the talent, you get 6% or 6.5%, something like that. Um, you need to have hurried horsemen all the way at the top in order to actually be faster. So you actually have to get to iconic tier five, which by the way, all the arc carriers should obviously be doing this. And if we look at the glove options here, at the legendary tier, let's see what these cavalry uh, gloves do. It's perplexing ploy. And that is actually difficult to pronounce. When the wielder's troop deals skill damage or smite damage, there's a 10% chance to produce the enemy's march speed. So I know this is going to sound really weird, but you like kind of have a weird choice. I feel like you probably stick with the blue gloves, right? This is going to just give you talented 4% march speed, which is pretty good. But I'm just going to point out that technically, if you had some gloves, and this is going to sound insane, but like if you add these infantry gloves, seeing red effect, whenever the wielder's troop takes damage, you have a 10% chance to gain march speed. I feel like I'd rather just have the base 4% march speed, but technically you could stack an upwards of, you know, 9% speed here. So it's not terrible. 12% if you talented at cavalry, like an absolute lunatic, but I don't think you should do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be real with you. I do not think that's a good call. What about leadership equipment? Does that have a cool effect? No, not really. So GG in that. So there you have it. The update to how to build the fastest march in the game. You use double C, you probably use Julius Caesar because guess what, folks? You do not even have to expertise your Julius Caesar to get the benefit of that. Although if you do max out your Julius Caesar, you'll at that point have maxed out the fourth skill, which gives you some nice extra troop capacity. So the triple C combination is really strong for moving super fast to carry arcs. Also, obviously I mentioned the double C with Honda Tadakatsu, really, really great. And there are some other budget things you can do, like, for example, buy bars. You know, he doesn't actually give you a lot of march speed, but when you leave combat, you gain 50% boost. People used to cheat that effect in Ark of Osiris for a long time, so we do need to mention it, that both Belisarius has this effect and buy bars. So on Belisarius, you gain 50% march speed for 10 seconds when you leave combat. Boom, you get leave combat, get that speed boost. This is a huge boost. There are some sneaky things you can do, but people aren't really trying to be sneaky in the same way in Arc League anymore. I'll mention it because, you know, early game, it's a thing you can get away with. But late game, Triple C is the way to go. Go with that windswept set for a long time. It's going to be about the best you can do. And then go for those cav boots if you can swing it. Talented them as well. I mean, look, here's what talented boots gets you, right? I can show you. You just do this on the cav instead. But, you know, you got 6.5% march speed. So 13% march speed. 65 from tier 4, 65 from tier 5. Uh, that's pretty legit, man. It's a lot of speed. So at that point, talented cav boots at tier 5, but, man, that, that's an expensive project. Most people aren't going to go for except for the most committed arc carriers. Even then, we're talking about a total of 5% extra speed, but hey man, for carrying that arc, the best of the best are going to do it. One last thing I'll cover really quickly is just the budget talent build here. If you're going the budget route and you're going to use your Dragon Lancer, which is totally fair for picking up runes, uh, just smash out this build right here. This is a great rune grabbing build. There's some talent points here that like, I don't even know why I distributed them this way, like Emblazoned Shield and Swiftness. But they're actually just completely irrelevant for the task of just going and getting runes. Whether you're in KVK and you just want to go grab one and sneak past an enemy, so definitely get Hasty Departure. Or you're just getting a rune at the temple so you can take advantage of a kingdom buff or whatever you want to do. Uh, this is your sort of everyday build on, on your Dragon Lancer, who actually, unironically, is kind of a workhorse, man. Like, he's marched a lot of time for me. Uh, and then, you know, Lancelot, it's worth mentioning in the very early game, this effect is actually pretty legit. If this commander's troop has been reduced to 50% of units or lower, you deal 15% more damage and get 15% march speed. Yeah, little 
little bit of a speed boost here, but he's only got 5% speed inherently. So maybe in like the first Mightiest Governor in a Kingdom, you'll make no friends, but you could do some stuff with a Max Lancelot, weirdly enough. Again, if you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. I'll have a card in the end screen for the original Max speed video. If you want even just like a little bit more of a breakdown of the exact percentages you're getting from these different builds, that's certainly worth checking out. Alternatively, if you're just looking for my latest guidance on like what are the best commanders in the game, card will be in the end screen in just a second. Hope you'll check it out.